Hello everybody, welcome back to day 14, Breaking Free from the Matrix. My name is Yona Brindis. And I'm Jeff Casper. And we're going to be your energy coaches here today, sharing another life energy training session. Yes. Thank you everybody for watching, for coming. We're looking at the live chat okay. right now, where you guys are from. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, we want to point out, and especially for this uh, lesson today, that uh, the reason why we do this live is for you to comment and to ask questions. Mm -hmm. And uh, even if you're watching the edited version of this video, please, you know, don't uh, shy away to to comment your uh, uh, experiences or you know things that come up for you while watching this video. So once more. Thank you so much for spending your time with us here. Yes. Now, I do want to start today with asking those of you who have been following us here these last 14 days how you experienced the meditation that we sent out with the video yesterday for you as homework mm -hmm. to practice inner connection. How did this go for you guys? And um, I'm going to do a little intro here for day 14, exploring, mm -hmm. um, because we have this little lag. And then I'd love to read some of your comments, all right? So what we did yesterday is it, um, we dove a little deeper into the importance of connecting within and uh, how this can lead us to an inner unity and in a wholeness that uh, then allows us to step out of matrix programming and we've defined matrix programming within these uh, uh, see within the series of lessons here quite a few times and each time from a different angle mm -hmm. and this uh, makes it uh, understandable for you why uh, we're, we're doing this for 21 days because it's not that easy it's simple, but not that easy. Right. And this is why we're moving like like a spiral through all these different layers of our ego that finally help us to reach that place in which we can feel safe enough, in which mm -hmm. we can feel loved enough, motivated enough, in which we can feel enjoyment, fulfillment, and purpose, mm -hmm. true purpose. And uh, when we connect within, which uh, needs to be practiced for various reasons, we will find out that there are parts in us that we have a hard time connecting with. Mm -hmm. And at first, you know, we won't notice it because, you know, we don't know what we're not connecting with until uh, we are asked to do certain tasks. Mm -hmm. For instance, finding a purpose, mm -hmm. finding your true <clears throat> talent. Those are all things that are connected with the ability to fully connect within. And let's not forget, one of uh, our main objectives here is to help you out with how you can leave or how you can liberate yourself from this collective experience, from this matrix programming. And a big part of that has to do with you understanding which parts of you are connected to this collective experience. And it is in the nature of these hidden parts, of these parts on us that uh, we cannot fully love, that we cannot fully reconcile with, that these things hide in the invisible, that these things hide in the shadows of ourselves. And those are the ones that keep us basically in the, the grip of our initial or intrinsic matrix programming that we all have as humans. All right, guys, still waiting on you guys to share how the meditation, mm -hmm. aligning to nature energies, aligning to higher vibratory energies went for you yesterday or is still going. We received wonderful emails and, mm -hmm. and posts from you guys describing how this uh, was very moving for you. So let's uh, come back to the shadows and the <laughs> hidden parts. How do we know that we have parts in us that are hidden somewhere? It's, it's pretty simple. If you guys 
had a hard time coming up with a purpose right at the beginning here of this energy training series, then you know that there are some things that you cannot fully connect with. Mm -hmm. And I honestly did not expect anyone to come up with a real or true purpose at this point. Um, that's why we asked this uh, question for purpose and not for intention. And we described and explained to you what the difference is. So now we are beginning to understand why this is such a complex journey mm -hmm. and how this is linked to our shadow, to you know, our masculine and feminine, to our ability to connect. And when it comes to connecting or understanding the importance of connecting, then you will be led to the realization that everything in your life, what you can love, what you can connect with, what you can appreciate, what you can enjoy, what you can devote yourself to, depends on your ability to connect within you. So basically, your ability to connect within determines your ability to connect with the outside. And guess what? The more you can connect with the outside, the less you need to externalize your needs, your your safety, your boundaries, approval, permission, mm -hmm. and any of these things that affect your self worth, your your that make you doubt yourself, that that um, determines the way you see yourself, that determines the way you approach things, that determines, you know, the stance that you can make in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. And with it, of course, also the space that you can claim. And here's the connection with uh, a fully embodying our spiritual nature, not just understanding it, but embodying it. So bringing it into the physical 3D existence. And that is that you need to claim your stake. You need to claim your space first. Mm -hmm. You cannot inhabit a space that you have not claimed. And that explains why so many of us energetically sensitive empaths have a problem with belonging and purpose. Yes, and we're getting uh, the first uh, experiences here. Sandra is sharing the meditation was really good, interesting, lots of heat. Um, best uh, is the space I woke up in in the morning feeling great. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Val shares. Thank you. Um, the meditation was very powerful, got quite emotional, which mm -hmm. surprised me. I was taken to a couple of painful memories, which I thought I had already dealt with. Well, this is the reason why we have all these training lessons out here, because as we go into the deeper layers of our inner and outer connections, we will encounter things that we didn't know were there or we thought we already um, dealt with uh, on a mental level perhaps, but not necessarily on the emotional or the, the spiritual and energetic level. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, what most people experience when they really allow themselves to go and explore this inner connection. Mm -hmm. Math cool. Matthew shares, felt grounded and calm, feeling a lot lighter today. Yes. Nice. Um, by practicing our inner connection, and this cannot be repeated often enough, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to encounter almost like a mini journey. Okay, so this meditation that uh, we've uh, shared as a gift here coming from our Sacred Self Healing Program is only a tiny little preview mm -hmm. of what happens to you when you actually allow yourself to experience these different layers of yourself. Uh, every of these steps comes with a major tool to connect with this particular energetic resonance. And once more, the goal is to become able to hold these higher vibratory places so that our overall manifestation ends up being you know, congruent with our higher vibratory goals. Because if we get stuck in these hidden places, in these disconnected places, 
uh, then we become con incongruent, we become irritable, we become irrational, we become, uh, you name stuck. it. <laughs> you, well, you become stuck. You, you get stuck, and that's, and that's the beauty, too, of also continuous spiritual work, is as you do processes like, you know, the, 20, the Sacred Self-Healing Program, or even listening to things like this, and you keep that process going, the repetitive nature of it, not only do you get stuck less, you notice when you are faster. And then you also have tools to get out of it, you know, and that's that's the power of, of dedicated spiritual work is you not only can face certain things easier because your energetic state is, is at a higher level or you're connecting with a higher state, but you begin to get a better um, ability to discern and feel when you are dropping. So it's very, very smart to do this daily repetition. And when it comes to understanding what stuckness as we called it a few times here in the past, really does to our energy and how it inflicts our ability to to claim our sovereignty, uh, then uh, all you really need to do is to look at your persistent patterns. What are some of the things that keep repeating in your life? Because they are the ones that show you basically those traps those, those pitfalls that you have, mm -hmm. that when things get a little more stressful or challenging, that you end up with. And for most of us, uh, this has to do with our core fears, with our uh, core um, needs, uh, and of course, uh, them being met or not. So these, these conflicts that we have and contradictions have a lot to do with our inner ability to actually see what it is that is not being met right now. Mm -hmm. And once more here, this is a deeper layer now of what we've already talked about. And there will be more layers, just so you know. It's not done with understanding that say, um, yes, I have an abandonment issue and that is uh, what uh, uh, creates my deepest core fear or my deepest um, need to uh, belong to something or to feel safe. No, you've got to learn how to connect with this part, how to reclaim this part and reconcile with it so that it doesn't dominate or drive your life anymore. Mm -hmm. And here is where uh, this uh, lesson gets to the, the center piece of itself and that is when we are setting out to explore new options, when we are trying to connect <clears throat> with this part in us that can connect us with our inner higher guidance, with our true calling, with our true nature. And we cannot really feel this. And we're trying everything but, more or less. That's when we have to look at what it really is, you know, that drives us. Mm -hmm. And driving, just so you know, at this stage of your journey is most likely determined by your core fears. In other words, by your ego, by your ego coping. And so if someone like say, um, goes into uh, uh, withholding when uh, something stressful happens, then uh, usually that is a sign that this person cannot really go into self-expression because there's a fear uh, of judgment or a fear of making mistakes. If someone goes into attack, if someone goes into like trying to overpower or over control the situation, then that's a sign that this person uh, may have a fear of, of getting punished. And if somebody goes into total disconnect, total dissociation, total withdrawing from you know, what the, uh, the ever the, the task or the challenge is, then that's a sign that we have a part in us that has never really experienced power from within. And we talked about pleasing, we talked about um, uh, some of these coping mechanisms, which we will dive a little deeper into tomorrow. But today, we want you to understand that there is a direct link between our, our drive in life Okay, and between uh, our uh, uh, sort of deep unresolved inner child issues. Mm -hmm. And how am I coming up with inner child aspects now? As you can imagine, uh, it's not so hard really to um, infer this because what happens when we go into these deep unresolved 
uh, in our conflicts is that we begin to act like children. Mm -hmm. And you can see this all over the world. Mm -hmm. The entire collective experience is dominated by unresolved inner child <coughs> aspects. And bringing this into um, a, a more uh, sort of metaphysical context for you here, um, it is uh, the, the trinity of things that we are looking at now. Uh, for the past couple of days, we've looked mm -hmm. at the dualism of things, which led to um, reconciling with masculine and feminine energies. Mm -hmm. When you actually begin to connect these two parts and balance them out within you, there's a new field that um, begins to form, and that is the, the creation field that comes out of the synergy and the unity of masculine and feminine energies. And this is the place of our inner co-creatorship. But it's directly linked to our um, ability to connect with masculine and feminine, to, to dissolve dualism within us. And so just to, to give you a visual here, you know, it is not enough to just, you know, see how this is connected with our uh, propensities to one extreme or the other extreme. It is important to understand that this is linked to the center. And so when you begin to reconcile with your inner child issues, what happens is, is it's almost like a bullseye that is created within you energetically, pointing at the center of your center. And so the trinity of things, which is also represented not only in the mother, father, and child energies, but uh, in so many other things in nature, all right. Uh, also past, present, future. And these are the parts here that you will discover uh, when you do this, mm -hmm. namely how they are linked mm -hmm. into your past and why this is affecting your future. So these are just a few um, uh, examples of how the, the, the inner child, the unresolved inner child can really draw, you know, dominate your life mm -hmm. and you will be able to download this this comes from the workbook in the uh, sacred self-healing program mm -hmm. so once you understand uh, that it's not just about uh, balancing uh, strength and weakness it's also about uh, really allowing these two to to come together it, then you will begin to understand what it means to truly connect within mm -hmm. and uh, uh, some of the things that are needed to do this is to explore, yes. is to explore the space <clears throat> within you. You have to give yourself permission to connect with the, these parts. And there are a few things that are needed to explore. And that is, of course, you know, the, the, the overall willingness mm -hmm. to let go of your perception of self, the one that has been dominating your life, to let go of, you know, this this need to control, this need to to um, uh, rely on, on this driving force in you. And this may sound contradictive, but the driving force in you guys is not your purpose. Unless you are fully aware of all your inner child aspects, the driving force in you is your core fear mm -hmm. is your inner child's unresolved stuff yeah it's the separation and the pain that's what drives you it's not staying out of that that's what keeps you going so by being willing to go into that with with vision and the willingness then you begin to break that down you begin to, to close that gap of separation and that's why we've been talking so much about embracing things mm -hmm. you know really allowing yourself to to feel your true feelings <clears throat> Because without that, you cannot really know what it really is that drives you. Yep. I hope this uh, makes sense. Um, how the connection between your shadow, your inner child, the inner imbalance, the mommy and the daddy issues that we have, you know, how all this plays together. And this uh, helps you to understand that uh, some of the, the failures in your life, some of and, and the majority of your learning experience mm -hmm. in life and also uh, the, the karmic thread that we will illuminate here uh, in a couple of days, that all these things are connected. Mm -hmm. And so uh, most of us, uh, without knowing, you know, work with, with our ego mind to figure out, you know, 
intention and purpose and talent and all that only to find ourselves in this repetitive wheel of having to force you know a way through our life and that's why we perceive life as a struggle and that's why we are all uh, more or less trying to survive our life and once more surviving is the direct link to your coping mechanisms to your uh, ego to your autonomous nervous system to your lower chakras mm -hmm. and this is what we see here uh, in the collective as predominant evolutionary process so if you want to out vibrate that you're gonna have to deal with your inner child and what happens when you do and this is the beauty of this is that you can begin to give yourself this space to explore to get back into this wondrous child energy you know when a two-year-old learns how to walk and talk all right he or she doesn't give up, you know, and just try to survive life, you know. They get up the 50th time, mm -hmm. and, you know, and they smile with every tiny little step forward. Mm -hmm. There's an enormous power in this. And you, you, you may begin to, to feel the difference here between force and power. When, when you link into your inner higher power it's self-propelled you begin to expand mm -hmm. spontaneously you don't have to force it you don't have to control it you just do it yep you don't have to think about what you're going to do you will just do it because the drive now is not force the drive is the expansive power of you being fully one with yourself and your environment and the energy propels you it's self-sustaining. It keeps you going. It's an excitement. It's fun. Even if it's scary, it's just you moving forward. It's, it's, it's really beautiful. Yeah, so you know when you have fully or, or at least, you know, uh, to a degree reconciled mm -hmm. with your inner child when you can enjoy life again, when you can feel the joy <clears> of being alive, when you can fully embrace your 3D experience. Mm -hmm. And yes, Sandra, thriving and not surviving yes, exactly absolutely so all the struggle that you experience is there for a reason okay namely to show you how you are trapped in this collective experience so the choice is yours but in order to even know what choices you have and this requires you to overcome your core fears mm -hmm. and to learn how to mm -hmm. feel safe enough without mm -hmm. externalizing your higher powers to you know uh, the validation of the system you know that you're doing good or the getting permission from the outside to to do things and embracing making mistakes mm -hmm. until you can do that you will continue to be trapped in your matrix programming. <clears throat> so when it comes to the uh, 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 implementation of uh, what we have uh, presented to you here today in this lesson, um, understand that uh, this is a process that can take a couple years. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, <clears throat> it took me like what, <laughs> thirty-five <laughs> years. <laughs> <laughs> Still working, yeah. <laughs> and uh, humor can really help yes, here. So yes. those of you who are parents, um, you know, it, parenting is a, is is one of these uh, wonderful accelerators on on this journey. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's an opportunity to learn from our children. Mm -hmm. Not only do they present this energy in a, in a more pure form, because you know they 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 don't have this. Uh, 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 fancy false self developed yet so uh, uh, we can see a lot of raw energies there and many of us when we first become parents we actually find ourselves in a place where we um, experience for the first time these hidden parts in us mm -hmm. these raw energies I mean be it the ability to see and feel beauty and connection and unconditional love or the rage and anger that a parent can go through mm -hmm. with their children 
both of these, you know, polarities belong to this experience. And that's why, uh, you know, I call it an accelerator because it really helps us to see this. But at the same time, it also brings in the medicine, namely the joy and uh, and the beauty and the humor, you know, and uh, the playfulness uh, that this uh, wondrous child uh, can bring into our lives. Now, we don't all have to be parents ourselves to connect with this energy. That's uh, why we recommend it to be... Um, or to connect more with the nature energies, you know, and animals. Animals can connect us to this energy as well. Or, you know, being with children, you know, playing with children, being goofy, you know, doing crafts project and messing up the whole house with glitter. You know, those are expressions of exploration, of, you know, tuning into this power within you, this expansiveness. All right. So, uh, in the practical, of course, uh, on the physical level, this does not mean that you guys all have to become parents now. <laughs> uh, it, it can, but it doesn't have to. Um, it's more about uh, you know finding out what makes you truly feel safe. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, many of these questions throughout the series here led to this point. What do you truly need to feel safe? What do you truly need to feel loved? Can you give yourself the permission to explore? Mm -hmm. And the reason why this is a physical step, because very often we will feel this in our body, how we are being held back mm -hmm. from moving forward. But it can also affect our um, finances or you know things such as our living condition so people who move a lot people who have issues finding the right place often deal with um, massive inner child uh, unresolved inner child issues on an emotional level um, you know it's uh, something that will be hard for you in the beginning but uh, it, after listening to what we've presented to you here today, it may um, be a little easier for you. Try to find out what has dampened you, what, yes. what has dampened that exploration drive in you. Okay, what held you back? Mm -hmm. and, and you can use your mind, you know, on a mental level to, to try to make out first patterns. Mm -hmm. Remember, you worked with your triggers before. This is the place where you can put the triggers together with the patterns. Mm -hmm. What are the things that drive you nuts, that hold you back, <coughs> that throw you into one drama after another? Those are so-called patterns. And patterns, they are the ones that describe the wheel that we all get stuck in. Mm -hmm. And on a social behavioral level, you know, which it always... Mm, ties in with the emotional and the mental um, aspects is do you know what has been driving you all your life do you really know what the driving force was in your life so far mm -hmm. I do mine has been inner child aspects in regards to not having been heard having been made fun of for some of the things that I expressed when I was little, which a lot of that has to do with our energetic sensitivity. So for me, it was like seeing things differently than others and, and people, uh, you know, or even my parents responding to this in a negative way. And so uh, this is probably why I am a teacher here today, because uh, the driving force in my life has always been trying to be heard. Mm -hmm. But there's other things that can drive you, such as um, the need for validation mm -hmm. or um, the need for pleasing. Approval, yes. You know, yeah. the, um, uh, the <clears throat> need to, for attention. Mm -hmm. Many of us with abandonment issues uh, have this uh, unsatiable need, you know, to, to, to stay in the center or to see them or make themselves the center. Uh, when fear and anxiety rules our life, um, it creates this unsatiable need to control everything and everybody around mm -hmm. us. All right, those are just a few examples here. Um, uh, so uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, really 
getting to the deeper layer of this, we call the spiritual, uh, but it's not really spiritual in a sense of like spiritual belief, but it has to, it ties in with our core beliefs. Mm -hmm. um, what you can do is uh, try to mm -hmm. connect with this part in you, this core fear mm -hmm. or this core need, and try to find out what age group does it resemble, mm -hmm. you know? Is this more like a, a something that makes you just sort of cry and, and feeling completely powerless, then it's probably linked to an inner child aspect that is um, that was uh, created or that was uh, um, disturbed in a very early stage, mm -hmm. you know, in your infancy from zero to two years old. Is it a you know when you when what drives you has to do with the tantrum or rage, you know, yelling and screaming. It's usually linked to the age group two to five, mm -hmm. you know, so where a lot of uh, that exploration um, uh, had to take place but couldn't take place. Uh, and there is um, other, there are other aspects to, uh, you know, the different age groups uh, that we uh, go into depth uh, mm -hmm. with here at Transcodes. Um, because uh, it requires you to really work with these parts for uh, a bit of time. Right. We have a wonderful um, energy training, transmission and healing circle uh, uh, workshops dealing with inner child aspects and next to uh, some of the connecting uh, and, and resolving some of the karmic issues in our child work is probably uh, you know, in conjunction with the shadow work, because they two link to another, uh, the, the most transformational mm -hmm. uh, inner work that you can do. Yes, because it brings up these old blocks that you kind of are aware of, but as you ask these questions and go into contemplation, all of a sudden you get some aha moments, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is where this is from, and you can begin to really work through this and reconnect with that um, vibrancy that you have as a child without the pain. Energetically, mm -hmm. uh, we recommend that you... Um, allow yourself to explore this within. Mm -hmm. And so um, we would uh, ask you to dedicate a meditation or a contemplation session mm -hmm. and to create the safe space where you actually invite your inner child, that part of you, you know, hidden in the basement, starved mm -hmm. and unloved. And uh, this can help you to reconnect with this part and perhaps even uh, begin to see that you, the, the, the you in the now, can actually give this to your inner child. Yes. It's almost like becoming our own parent, you know. But for many of us, this is a, a very uh, emotionally releasing process, you know, where we just reach out. Just reaching out and exploring the space will help you to explore more options and even talents and purpose and calling in your adult practical life yes. right now. Yeah, so the the homework uh, for tomorrow is um, when you connect with uh, this part and the homework can help you with that, um, we want you to connect with your very early hopes and dreams. Yes. yes. As Far back as you can remember, when you were like maybe a five-year-old or a six-year-old, when you wanted to become a firefighter or when you wanted to become um, a astronaut, an astronaut or <laughs> nurse or a mommy or whatever that is, mm -hmm. you want you to connect with that part right. of you um, because that's where some of your hidden talents reside and they can be um, major sort of or they can cue your inner guidance mm -hmm. as to where you need to look. The energy work associated with this lesson is um, reclaiming mm -hmm. through inner fusion, and the energy work uh, transmissions um, are the uh, inner child transmission, the um, shadow work transmission, the healing circle transmissions, and grace integrity yes. once more. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow we're going to talk about uh, how all this ties together mm -hmm. uh, in our coping mechanisms in these patterns. So we're going to talk about the wounded part of us and um, why it's so difficult 
to come by it and we'll introduce a few tools to you how you can work with your deep inner pain. I hope this uh, helped you to illuminate uh, some of the complexity of uh, exploring <laughs> today. And uh, we'll see you here tomorrow again at 1 p.m. Thank you so yes, much for you. watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and like this video. Yes, yes wonderful comments. Lots of gratitude back to you guys. Yes. Hope to see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.